We have a new version of Windows 11 with the release of 25H2. So we're going to need a new guide on how to install that version on unsupported hardware. So that's what we're doing today. Stay tuned. So way back when Windows 11 first came out, we immediately found ways to get around the hardware requirements for Windows 11. As a response to this, Microsoft said that unsupported hardware on Windows 11 would not receive any updates. However, that limitation has only ever been enforced on build updates. When new builds for Windows 11 come out, we have to use workarounds in order to install them on unsupported hardware even on systems that are currently running an older build of Windows 11. 25H2 is no exception to this. So if you're moving from a Windows 10 system or a Windows 11 system on unsupported hardware, then today I'm gonna to show you how to upgrade that system to the latest build of Windows 11. But first, I got some bills to pay. So check out today's sponsor. Are you still running Windows 11 unactivated because the license just costs too much? Then you should check out today's sponsor, VIP SCD Key, where you can get a valid Windows 11 license for around $20. Stop dealing with that stupid watermark and actually be able to change your desktop background with a valid license for Windows 11. Just go to the link in the description below and pick up a valid Windows 11 license key. During checkout, use the code CYBERCPU for a 25% discount. Once you have your key, go to your activation settings in Windows 11 and click the link that says change product key. Enter the product key you just purchased and hit activate. Now you don't have to deal with that stupid watermark. And check out the description for deals on not just Windows, but Office too. Now, on with the video. So since Windows 10 lost support a few weeks ago, there's likely a lot of people that are either extending support for Windows 10 or just installing Windows 11. For those installing Windows 11, this video is for you. And I just have to state this right off the bat, but unfortunately, this guide will not work on systems that don't support SSE 4.2. Unfortunately, that's a technical limitation that with the Windows kernel itself, and there is simply no way around it. There's just no way to upgrade those systems. And either way, those systems are over 20 years old, and it's kind of time for an upgrade. I wouldn't recommend running Windows 11 on those systems, even if we could get around the limitation. In fact, I've been recommending an absolute minimum of a fourth generation Intel or one of the higher end AMD FX processors. But with AMD, you'll get the best results with the first generation Ryzen because those FX CPUs weren't very good to begin with. But they will run Windows 11. And as proof of that, I have our trusty eWaste gaming PC back again for this video running an AMD FX 6300. This system also has 16 gigs of memory and I believe about a 240 gig SSD. It's essentially a trash SSD that I threw in this system just so we could do these videos. And it fails every single system requirement for Windows 11. Because ultimately, if your system is unsupported for Windows 11, there still are some hardware requirements that you should consider. One of those would be an absolute minimum of eight gigs of memory. But I still recommend 16. Also, get yourself an SSD. At this point in time, it's just not worth installing a modern versions of Windows on spinning disks. Also, I mentioned this earlier, but I gotta repeat it because I get a lot of people commenting on this one in every one of these videos that I do. But you're gonna need a processor that supports at absolute minimum SSE 4.2. But with that said, let me get this computer hooked up and I'll show you how to install Windows 11 on this thing. Okay, so here we are in Windows 10. Now this process will work exactly the same if you're in an older build of Windows 11, but I'm just doing this from Windows 10 because many people are gonna be upgrading from Windows 10 at this point. Now, this system is currently as updated as possible in Windows 10, but it's out of support now because Windows 10 ended support. Let me go ahead and run the PC Check app the PC Health Check app here. And as you can see, if we check for Windows 10 support, it fails Secure Boot, TPM 2.0, and the processor isn't on the Windows 10 supported CPUs list. So this fails every single requirement for Windows 11. But we're gonna go ahead and install Windows 11 anyway. So the first thing that we're gonna need to do is we're gonna need to download Rufus. So to find that, just go to Google and search for Rufus. 
And I'll go ahead and leave a link to this down in the description below also. If I forget to, make sure to remind me, sometimes I do. I like to download the portable version of Rufus, so that's the one that I would recommend to get. So go ahead and click on that and get that one downloaded. And then while that's downloading, we need to download Windows itself. So for that, we're just gonna type in Google, Windows 11 25H2 ISO. And by clicking on that, the first link should be Microsoft's download page. We're gonna be using the official ISO from Microsoft, not some shifty one that we downloaded from some third party website. We're gonna get the one straight from Microsoft. So from here, you're gonna go ahead and wanna click which ISO you want and all they have available is Windows 11. So go ahead and click that and hit download and then select your product language. Now this one's important right here. You have to get, if you're upgrading from a previous version of Windows, you have to get the correct language or the upgrade will fail. And to do that, go ahead and click on the start button, type CMD, make sure you run this as an administrator, click yes to the user account control, and then we're gonna wanna type DISM space forward slash online space forward slash get dash I-N-T-L and then hit enter. And this will give you all the information for the current version of Windows you're running. And as you can see, I'm running the English US version of Windows. And it says right here, the default UI language is also English US. So that's really important. So based with that information, you're gonna to wanna to go down and pick the English US version or whatever result you got from that command and then go ahead and hit confirm. And then it's gonna take a second to validate your request. And then once it does, you can go ahead and click the link and download the 64-bit ISO for Windows 11. Now it's gonna take you quite a while to download this, but luckily I've already downloaded it, so I can go ahead and cancel mine. So we're gonna open up our file explorer. We're gonna go into downloads. Then from here, you should have Rufus and the ISO that you just downloaded. As you can see, I still have the ISO for 24H2 because I think that was the last time I used this system. So anyway, we're gonna go ahead and install Rufus real quick. Go ahead and hit yes to user account control. And then from here, it's gonna ask you a question on if you wanna check for application updates online. I would say yes, because this actually enables different parts of Rufus that wouldn't be enabled otherwise. So I would highly recommend hitting yes for that. And then the next thing you're gonna need is a USB thumb drive. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug that one in now. And once you get your USB drive plugged in, as you can see, I already have the ISO created for this one, but I'm gonna go ahead and do it again for this video. Now, you may get this error that comes up that says that they have an update available for Secure Boot. And if you get this, go ahead and hit yes and let it download that update right there. Make sure that the USB thumb drive you pick is at least an eight gig thumb drive. You're gonna need that because of the size of the Windows ISO. It's getting quite big. And then from here, we're gonna go ahead and push the select button and we're gonna choose the Windows 11 25H2 ISO from our downloads folder that that we downloaded earlier. Go ahead and hit OK. And then once it opens that, there's one more thing that you're gonna wanna push. You're gonna wanna go ahead and hit the keys, Alt and E, in order to turn on the dual UEFI BIOS mode. And you're gonna need to do this on most systems, especially if you're installing on unsupported hardware, because some of these systems simply don't support UEFI. So once you click that, it should automatically change your partition scheme to MBR, but it will allow you to boot to both MBR and UEFI. So you'll be able to install Windows 11 on any system, whether it be UEFI or MBR. So it's a really good idea to hit that command before you hit start. And then once you're ready, go ahead and push the start button and you'll get this window, the user experience window will come up. Now, obviously we wanna bypass the Windows hardware requirements. So that one's definitely gonna be checked. We also want to remove the requirement for our Microsoft accounts. So we're gonna check that too. I'm also gonna to go ahead and check the disabled data collection. This is essentially all those privacy questions that come up at the end of the open box experience. And then I also wanna click disable BitLocker automatic device encryption. Now, this is a personal choice that I make because honestly, I hate it when BitLocker just takes over and encrypts a system without somebody specifically telling it to. And this will disable that automatic encryption. It won't stop you from being able to use BitLocker. It'll just stop it from being automatic. And then from there, go ahead and hit OK. It's gonna warn you that it's gonna destroy everything on the thumb drive, but that's okay, because that was the point, remember, Hopefully you have no important data on that eight gig thumb drive I told you to plug in earlier. Once you're ready, go ahead and hit okay, and it'll go ahead and delete all the partitions on the drive, and it'll create the USB for you. It's gonna take some time to create it, especially if you're on a slower system. So give it some time to finish, and we can move on to the next step. 
So this is gonna take some time. I told you earlier that you should be using an eight gigabyte USB drive, but as of right now, the Windows 11 25H2 ISO is seven gigs. So it's practically the entire size of the USB thumb drive. If it gets any worse, we might have to upgrade to 16 gig drives in order to make USB installs. But the primary reason why this is is because Microsoft's currently using a WIM file in the Windows installation for all the installation files for Windows. If as soon as they upgrade that to an ESD file, which hopefully they do soon, it should cut the size of the ISO in half, or at least close to half. The ESDs are, are they're compressed a lot more than the WIM files. But either way, it's gonna take a while with the size of the ISO currently. So once it finishes, I will meet you on the system and we'll get Windows 11 installed. Okay, so we finally finished, and as you can see in the bottom corner here, it took 21 minutes and 36 seconds to create this ISO. But also, we're doing this on an FX6300, and we're also doing this with an ISO that's seven and a half gigs, so it's gonna take some time. As you can see with the Windows, the Windows 11 24H2, it's sitting at 5.6 gigs, so, Going from a WIM install to a ESD install definitely does compress the size of the install down quite a bit. And hopefully Microsoft will get a more compressed version of that into the system soon. But I'm still using a 16 gig USB, so it doesn't matter either way to me. But if you're using an eight gig, it might get a little cramped with the new ISO size, but hopefully it'll shrink down sometime. So once this finishes, you can just push close right here. We can go ahead and close all these windows. And at this point, we can open up our file explorer, go into this PC, and as you can see, we have our USB drive right here with our setup file. Now, essentially, all we have to do at this point is just click setup and start the Windows setup. So with Windows 11, you can do this, like I said, on a Windows 10 system or a Windows 11 system. It doesn't matter, it should work exactly the same. So I'm gonna go through the setup process real quick. It's gonna take a little while for it to set up, but there's a few changes. Like for instance, I usually go through and tell it not to do updates. I'll go ahead and do that later. But as you're going through the setup process, there is one thing that's gonna be different. Normally, you're going to, it's checking your PC and it's gonna say, up. Oh, you don't pass the Windows 11 system requirements. But as you can see in this one, it just went right by that. If we hit accept, it should give us an error saying our system doesn't support Windows 11's requirements and it'll allow us just to bypass that. Yeah, here, right here. It says your PC doesn't meet the minimum requirements for running Windows 11. These requirements help ensure blah, 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 whatever. If you click accept, it'll just move on to the next point. So this is the benefit of using Rufus to install this other than just running the regular Windows ISO because the regular Windows ISO simply wouldn't allow you to install it. It would just stop you at that point. So as you can see, it's gonna install Windows 11 Home and it's gonna keep all personal files and apps. And I go ahead and push the install button and it'll start the install. So I'm gonna go ahead and let that finish and I'll meet you in the out-of-box experience. So it's gonna take a minute for this to finish because honestly, this system is not the fastest system for Windows 11. So it's gonna take a minute. But while it's installing, I just wanted to say that I usually kind of concentrate on upgrades from other earlier versions of Windows like Windows 10 or older builds of Windows 11 because that's what most people are gonna be doing. However, this USB will also work for fresh installs of Windows 11. So if you wanna just wipe the system out and put a fresh copy of Windows 11 on it, you can use this USB as well for that. But it's gonna take a minute for this to finish, but I'll meet you in the out-of-box experience once it's done. Okay, and here we go. Clearly, we have Windows 11. Now, I think I said I was gonna meet you guys in the out-of-box experience. That was my mistake. That's only for fresh installs. When you're upgrading, it just goes right into Windows 11. Now, if we go here, we're gonna click on settings here real quick. We're gonna go into system and then scroll down on system and we're gonna click about. And then from the about page, it should, we should scroll down and you can see we are currently running 25H2. And I don't know why, but I just really like doing this. If you click on all, we're gonna scroll down to our PC health check and we're gonna set this right by the about page here. Once it loads, as you can see, it's a little sluggish in Windows 11, but it's not too bad. We're gonna go ahead and check for hardware requirements. And this PC currently does not meet the Windows 11 system requirements, but it's running 25H2. I don't know why I like doing that, but I just find it funny. Now, before making this video, I tried every known process for installing Windows 11 on unsupported hardware. 
The two most popular are the Rufus method, like we just did, and the server install method. The reason I tested them is because I heard rumors that Microsoft disabled the server install method in 25H2, but I was able to use that method as well to install it, so I don't think those rumors are true. I even tested these methods on the beta version of 25H2 as well, and both Rufus and the server install work just fine. That doesn't mean that that won't change later on down the line, but as of right now, it looks like all of the previous methods of installing unsupported hardware on 25H2 work just fine, or at least installing 25H2 on unsupported hardware, that is. However, I still think that the Rufus method is a better method because once you create the USB drive, there's nothing else to do. You can just use that same USB drive to install Windows 11 on as many computers as you want without worrying about hardware requirements. And the U Rufus method also works with fresh installs. The server install method doesn't. That's only for upgrades from previous builds or previous versions of Windows. Also, on a side note, you can even use the Rufus method on supported hardware to bypass the Microsoft account requirements for 25H2. That even works on the latest beta that has disabled all the other workarounds. But with that said, and as you saw a minute ago, hardware, your unsupported hardware is your experience might vary because Windows 11 is getting a little slow on unsupported hardware. But luckily, I made a video showing you how to increase your performance on unsupported systems in Windows 11. And you can check that video out right here. In that video, I show you multiple tweaks that you can do to improve your performance on unsupported hardware. I highly recommend checking out those tweaks. But as always, you guys have a great day.